so Steve is at first uh, a warm welcome on behalf of everybody on the forum to Steve Borthwick, the new head coach. We might as well get straight into it, Steve. The first question, um, a broad question on rugby. What do you see as the facets of the game that Tigers must improve on to get to the top of the game? And what's your priority order? Uh, a similar question, that's from Melvin. A similar question from Pip Ostel is, what's your three priorities for this team? Um, firstly, I'd like to say thank you for all the support, to all the supporters on the call. And um, thank you for all that you give for Leicester Tigers. I know that the players, as you can see, and certainly saw in the way they performed on Sunday at Welford Road. Um, the, the players care deeply about this team. Uh, we talk an awful lot about the supporters and we're disappointed you're not able to watch, but we know you're supporting us from wherever you may be in the world. So essentially you're looking defence, attack, the relevant transitions, set piece and breakdown. Now, in which order do you prioritise? You need to see which ones are going to be the key ones that are going to enable you to win. What facets are, going to you, are you going to make your trademarks? What are you going to be excellent at? Because if you try and be all things to all people, you end up being nothing. Um, so, quite clearly, to win in rugby, you need to, and this comes to the second part of the question, to win in rugby, you need to have strong, absolute strong foundation. When you represent Leicester Tigers, we need to build a strong set piece, a dominant set piece. We need to build a defence that people find incredibly hard to break down and get the ball back for us to then attack from. And in rugby right now, with the nature of where the game is at, you need to have a strong kicking face. So you need to have an excellent platform for kicking face. And off the back of those, attack comes. So you've got to have the foundation. So in order to build the foundation, inevitably you have to look at the set piece, you have to look at the kicking face, you have to look at defence. Because without those, you'll struggle to win games. Now, within those, and the, you've got to be physically equipped to be able to, do, to handle those. And the man next to me is the best in the world, ensuring the team is physically equipped. So... A key priority since I started on July the 1st has been ensuring that we are physically equipped and I'm very fortunate to be able to work with Alan to ensure that we have a team that is going to be conditioned for the way we want to play. Is that where we're at now? No, we've got a lot of work to do, but uh, we've made a good start on that work. Thanks, Steve. Bring in Alan, talking about conditioning the players. How do you assess that work? Uh, so far and the improvements made in quite a short period, period of time? Um, yeah, good evening everyone, first of all. Um, yeah, we, we, we're constantly assessing. We've a fair few different uh, means of doing that from the gym work. You know, it's very easy to see what the numbers are. Are they improving by what rate? Um, body weight, body composition. So what I mean by that is what composition of their bodies are we? Are we reducing the amount of fat on, on, on these players? Are they reducing in fat? Are we increasing lean muscle, um, which is obviously a big target of ours? And then what we do on the field, you know, we've got GPS measures on, on, on every single player, all the way through from the senior through to the development squad. Um, so we can track track the progress there. But probably one of the most important way, most important ways at the moment is the you know, is the subjective as well as the objective. So is Steve, is Jordan, are the coaches seeing a difference in the players and, and are we actually getting in the right direction to, to play in the, the way we want to play? So, yeah, we, we, we're constantly assessing, you know, and, and we're fortunate to have a lot of, a, a lot of ways to do that. Thing. Thanks, Alan. I'm going to bring in Jordan, a question from Victoria Redshaw. Um, Jordan, you've been right in the heart of this from the first day when the place got shut down in March. Everyone's still working under COVID restrictions, but how's that affected Oval Park? And how do you how do you operate now? Everybody is back together, but there's still restrictions on what you can do on certain days. Um, thanks for that, Victoria. Um, and just to echo Steve, thank you very much for joining us this evening. Um, I know it's strange times, um, hence the, the Zoom supporters evening, which we've done so on so many occasions at Welford Road and we've all enjoyed. Um, thank you for, for doing it digitally. Um, so when we got shut down in uh, in February, we were sort of under the assumptions we'd be back up playing very, very shortly. And that obviously a, a sort of stretched and stretched and stretched and caused some frustrations in that we thought we were going to be able to launch sooner than we were. But eventually when we did 
get a green light to return. We had a uh, social distancing training. So what that looked like in the beginning was guys coming in in very small groups, just at Oval Park, um, training in lanes, sort of no ball work, and then leaving. And that was sort of for three, four weeks. And then we had a, a limited time where we started back into some amber activities. So amber activities would be sort of shoulder on, not not face-to-face -face contact or anything uh, of that severity. We had that for a few weeks before we were unable to, sort of three weeks before first game to start playing rugby realistically, tackling, doing scrummaging. Um, so we've had to tailor what we would usually do in order to get ourselves right to play games. And, and I think Alid and Steve, it's been challenging for them, but they've been planning sessions to the nth degree and, and trying to get everything we can and squeeze every drop out of the opportunities that we have had to get better. Um, what it means for us on a daily basis is we get tested uh, most Mondays or three days out from a game. Um, so those, those results come back 24 hours later. So we've been practicing a uh, social distancing in, and we've got the, the gym and all of our facilities laid out in, in order to be COVID secure. One of the questions looking forward, Paul Drogett, what are the plans for fans to return post COVID? Um, evening, everybody. Thanks, Paul, for the, the question. The plans um, have been put in place really since uh, just after lockdown happened. So we were fully aware of uh, the impact in the immediacy. We obviously, like everybody, didn't realise how long it would go on for. So we, with our safety advisory group and our safety officer, put together um, our risk assessments and submitted them for both two metre and one metre distancing. So we have all of that work done, all of that work approved. Um, that's been submitted to the Department of Culture, Media and Sport. We've been talking to Premiership Rugby and the RFU. So really we're knocking on every door we possibly can to try and get fans back into the stadium in whatever numbers we can. Um, and we're, we're ready and waiting to do that. We've had, with the games behind closed doors, we've been looking at various cost-saving elements and we've had a lot of full-time staff that have been volunteering as stewards. Um, so we, we have our people ready to go, we have our risk assessments ready to go and we just need you guys back as soon as we can possibly do it.